Good evening, you guys, and welcome to this special edition of WEBN General News, our live holiday show. I'm Caroline Reese. And I am Justin Chen. We will be your hosts for tonight. Justin, there is something so special about this time of year. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is, right? You know what? I think everything during this time of the year is very special. Mm. The music, the food, the decoration, and oh, of course, tonight's tree lighting course. ceremony. Why we're here. Yes, Boston Street Lighting is such a fun night, full of so much joy and love, and we could not be any more excited to maybe kick off your Christmas season here tonight with us. From a magical look at Snowport to learning the best ways to gift this season, we have a packed night for you guys. The anticipation is already building as we wait for our Boston tr Christmas tree light to light up. Katie Delaney is live at the tree right now. Katie, tell us how is the crowd feeling? <laughs> Guys, the crowd is so energetic right now. People are getting festive. They're getting ready for the holiday season here at the tree lighting. People have free hot chocolate. Kids have, have light up spinny things and swords. The energy is great and the anticipation is only building. The question on everyone's mind is when is the tree gonna be lit? And that's gonna be at 7.55 and we'll be here reporting on it. So do not miss it. There will be the lighting and also a big firework display after. It'll be a great time, so stay along with us. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Katie. Stay warm there. So we'll catch up with you later. Let's now head to Faneuil Hall, where they had their tree lighting ceremony last week. Aparna Prabhakar has the report. Aparna? This holiday season, Faneuil Hall is decked with boughs of holly and a whole lot of Christmas spirit. Visitors of Quincy Market and Faneuil Hall can look forward to Christmas cheer, shopping, and food at the historic Boston landmarks. I love the shopping. There's a lot of great stores. The two locations have rung in the holidays with festive decor and a myriad of food options, from seafood to sweet treats. I love coming out here. Um, always great. To many locals, the holiday season is a time for the Boston community to find unity. My favorite part about Boston during the holidays would probably be how different communities actually like come together to make things look pretty. For WBN, I'm Aparna Brubacher at Daniel Hall. Thank you, Aparna. Another important thing during the holiday season is, of course, Christmas music. For more on that, we go to our correspondent, Sam Lawrence. So how are you, first of all, Sam? Thank you, Justin. I'm doing great. Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas One and All Tour is set to hit Boston on Monday, December 11th at the TD Garden. This will be her first national tour since the COVID-19 pandemic. The 16-show tour began last week in Highland, California. She has already performed six shows since, performing in Montreal just last night. Fans can expect to hear some of Carrie's classics, such as Oh Santa and All I Want for Christmas is You. Additionally, Carrie has listened to her fans on TikTok and will be singing her viral hit, It's a Wrap, as a part of her multi-song pop medley towards the end of the concert. Tickets are still available for purchase, with the cheapest seats currently going at $81 on Ticketsmarter.com. In other concert news, the iHeartRadio Jingle Ball is coming to Boston on Sunday, December 10th at 6 p.m. The festive Christmas tour boasts a stacked lineup of performers, including Olivia Rodrigo and Big Time Rush. Boston's show will feature SZA, Sabrina Carpenter, One Republic, and David Kushner. F for fans who aren't able to attend the show in person, an edited concert special will air on ABC at 8 p.m. on December 21st. That's all I have for upcoming entertainment news. Back to you at the desk. I still wish Taylor Swift was performing, though. Thank you, Sam. But <laughs> Now, why is it that there's this unwritten rule that nobody plays Christmas music until the day after Thanksgiving? Yeah, exactly, right? But I thought it started after Halloween. <laughs> That's when I started, <laughs> and I've been playing it nonstop since on all my commutes. <laughs> it's the best. Well, don't worry. We have so much more holiday spirit coming up on the way. We check back in with Katie at the Common and take a look at the shimmering snowport. Stay right there.
are back with our live holiday special. Now, Justin, have you gone to start on your Christmas shopping? No, not at all. I missed my opportunity this year during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. What about you, Caroline? You missed out. I, I did get a start on mine. Uh, I was able to hop on a lot of those deals, actually. I kind of think Black Friday exists for people like me who just need to shop all the time. Yep. So. Yeah, so Black Friday <laughs> is made for you, Caroline. So, and speaking of gift gifting, do you know this Christmas tree is actually a gift from Nova Scotia? Tell us more. So it is a tradition that has been going on for more than 40 years. So what is this all about? Katie Delaney is standing by at the tree for us. So Katie. That's right, Justin. This is actually the 52nd year that Nova Scotia has gifted the city of Boston their Christmas tree. And it's all because Boston helped them out at a time of need many, many years ago. In December 1917, two ships in Halifax Harbor crashed, causing a deadly explosion. And Boston was there to help out when they needed it. They sent a train within a day of the explosion filled with supplies and emergency personnel so that they could help them with the recovery efforts. And ever since 1971, Nova Scotia has been gifting Boston a tree to repay the favor. So really the tree isn't just a symbol of holiday cheer, but it's also a symbol of the over 100 years of friendship between Boston and Nova Scotia. Back to you. Thank you, Katie. We'll check back in soon. Don't get too cold out there. <laughs> For more history on the tree, we will go to Aliana West. So what can you tell us, Aliana? As the city's holiday season unfolds, the iconic Christmas tree from Nova Scotia now stands tall at the Boston Common. And behind this festive symbol lies a century-old tale of friendship and gratitude. The tree is here! Yeah. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Merry Christmas! This majestic tree is more than just a festive centerpiece. It's a living tribute to the bond between Nova Scotia and Boston, born out of a historical event that forever linked these two communities. It's still near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. For Sandra Johnston, saying thank you is saying Merry Christmas with the tree, and every year she helps select the tree to bring to Boston. Most communities have and families have those traditions, and they mean a lot to folks, and they really connect in with them. And it's not a lot of opportunity that we get to say this thank you on this international level. And I think this is one of those events that allows folks to express and feel those feelings. The Halifax explosion was a catastrophic event in 1917 that left an undeniable mark on Nova Scotia. And in the face of adversity, Boston's swift response became the foundation of a tradition that continues to touch hearts. People have a strong connection still to the uh, Halifax explosion, and you don't have to go too far to find um, a connection to an immediate family member or some other um, close relative that was affected by the Halifax explosion. The tree will stand tall over the Boston Common. Most will see how pretty it is without ever realizing its roots in the history books, but the park's commissioner sure does. The first tree for Boston was donated in 1918, and the tradition restarted again in 1971 and has continued for the past 52 years. This year's 45-foot tree was generously donated by Betty Gorley and her family. Growing alongside them for around 40 years, this tree represents a long-awaited honor. Marking the 50th year of this tradition, it's clear that the holidays are filled with gratitude and the Boston Common Christmas tree will continue to stand tall and represent this enduring historic friendship. Thank you, Aliana. How cool is that? Now, Justin, I know you said you haven't done your Christmas shopping yet, but we in, the <laughs> we in the studio are going to help you out with that. Mm. Megan O'Brien is here in the studio to give us some tips and tricks and some advice on gifting to those special people in your life. Take some notes. So what can you tell us, Megan? <laughs> Thanks so much, Caroline. It's that time of year where holiday shopping is starting to kick into high gear. And for those who want to buy the best gifts in the season, don't know where to start, look no further than Sewa Winter Festival. It's a great way to support local businesses while exploring a diverse selection of gifts. The festival is arriving to Boston for the eighth time, bringing in over 100 different stalls spanning between art, food, crafts, and even some live music to help you get into the holiday spirit. The cost of entry for the market is $10 per person and will be open until December 17th. If you're looking to give your loved ones experiences over physical gifts, there are plenty of festivities in Boston to experience with your family and your friends that will create memories to last a lifetime. 
For instance, the beloved Boston Pops are returning to Symphony Hall tomorrow. Their two-hour program will feature familiar holiday favorites performed by the Boston Symphony Orchestra and Tanglewood Festival Chorus. The group also offers kids sensory and friendly performances, making this experience accessible for all families. And continuing on the theme of music, another great experience to gift your loved ones is the Boston Ballet's rendition of the Nutcracker, held at the Citizens Bank Opera House. Running from now until December 31st, Tchaikovsky's infamous ballet has been a fan favorite amongst Bostonians since its premiere in 2012. And with that, I hope to have sparked some gift ideas for you in the area. That's all I have now. Back to you at the desk. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Now, one of Boston's most festive places to do a little shopping happens to be in Seaport. It has officially transformed into Snowport. And we are going to one of our reporters, Nia Harmon, to take a look at what you can expect if you plan on taking a visit this winter. Happy holidays from Snowport, the Seaport District's fifth annual holiday market. Here at the festive pop-up, we have over 120 vendors, most of them being New England-based. Basically, what More Than Words is, is we are a nonprofit based in Massachusetts. And how it works is we help at-risk youth who are homeless or court-involved, or just at-risk in general. I'm out here, again, as an alumni, helping out to sell books to the people of Snowport. Here, it's, we've kind of, it's been like really more touristy and like we're getting people from a lot of different parts of the country. So that's been really nice to see that. Ooh, we got a really neat dish from my mom that, from Turkey. And so you get things that are international as well as like local and it's a great place to just shop. So having an outlet like this where I can actually get my products into people's hands and see people go through the greeting cards and pick them up and laugh or say, oh, I like this or I wish this came in a different color. That feedback and actually seeing people look at and use my products is so invaluable. I love the cute shops and getting to spend time with my friends. Love visiting. The food. From Snowport, I'm Nia Harmon, WEBN, Boston. Well, all right, I need, I need to bring my moms there. So <laughs> now let's turn to Katie Delaney at the comment right now. So we are looking at the tree, actually. So Katie, I know you are over there. Had, uh, uh, the reaction there is certainly very exciting. So what are the actual reaction there for crowds over there? A lot of fun here. We're actually here today with the Grinch, a.k.a. Brianna Emerson student. So, Brianna, tell us all about your look today, first and foremost. Green everything. Uh, it probably took about three hours to do my makeup. And then I got this sweater at Walmart, and that's pretty much it. I'm just here to have good times and show my creative side. Amazing. I love that commitment. And so how has your experience been so far? What's the reaction been to your look today? I'm actually surprised. I've had a lot of people just like look at me being like, okay, this is kind of normal, which I don't think it is. And then I've had some where they're like, wow, like I love it. I'm like, thank you. Love you. Spreading the fun holiday vibes, of course. And so are you excited for the main event here, which is the tree lighting? I'm so excited. So I'm at Emerson College. I've been coming here for the past three years. This is my last and final tree lighting ceremony, so I felt like, you know, go big, go home, you know? Or go big, or go home, you know? Exactly. Same thing with me, my last one, and here we are, indeed, going big or going home, and we're so excited, like everyone else here, for the tree lighting. Thank you so much, Brianna. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I don't remember how it started. Go Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. But I heard every word. We are, we are back to our live winter special. You know, a true favorite of mine, a hidden gem in Boston this time of year, is the frog pond. 
which has officially transformed, and it isn't just the cutest little ice skating rink. <laughs> and people love it. Yes. I mean, every day there's always people skating away. Always. And I'm so impressed by ice skaters. I wish I could do what they do. Maybe they can teach me a little something this season. <laughs> well, now we're going to head to Isabella Osgood for more on this. Isabella? I'm reporting from the Frog Pond Skating Rink, which is open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day, all winter. Admission for adults is $15, and the rink also hosts college nights. The first college night for Emerson is December 5th. First established in 1996, the Frog Pond Skating Rink has become an important winter tradition in Boston. What are the top like 10 um, most visited places or cities to visit during the winter? And this was one of them, and so we came. Kevin Hamill, who works as a Zamboni driver at the rink, monitors the quality of the ice before opening each day. I think it's an important place in Boston, especially in Boston Commons. It's definitely historic, so it's uh, pretty awesome around here. Prior to the tree lighting, synchronized skating group The Haydenettes will be performing a free show to the public. But I feel like it's it's for all ages. Yeah. Like, we, there's some little kids out here. Yeah. And, like, different, I mean, Boston's pretty cultural. I feel like you get a lot of different cultures, and with all the schools around, too. Yeah. After, like, the summer break, um, I wanted to skate some more, so that's why I came today. The rink is closed December 24th and 25th and closes early on New Year's Eve at 3 p.m. Happy holidays! <laughs> For WBN, I'm Isabella Osgood. If holiday lights are not enough, the Commonwealth Avenue Mall is displaying holiday lights of its tree line right now. The lighting event will happen on December 1st, so Caroline it certainly is a place for a good look or a cute day. Oh, no, it definitely is. I love it over there. Have you been? I have. I went last year. Beautiful. It is. It is. And you know, actually, the Polar Express is here in Boston. Love Polar well, Express. Well, not the real Polar Express, but the All the Board Trains at Science Park is here at the Museum of Science. And this is an immersive experience that allows you to experience that classical winter landscape and feel the Christmas spirit. The 3D exhibit is running now, and tickets can be bought at the Museum of Science's website. Are you a fan of Polar Express? I am. Very. I also love trains, so yes. that's also <laughs> a com good combination, yes. right? Now, Katie, Katie, we know it's getting close. We see you out there. What is the energy like? You know, I'm seeing that scene in Elf where everyone at the end of the movie is like sitting absolutely. and waiting. <laughs> yes, it is absolutely like the end of Elf vibes. Everyone here is doing just that. Everybody is waiting. The crowd over here is huge. As you can see, there's a lot of people all around me. There are thousands of people here on the comet all getting ready to just see that tree lit, to see that big fireworks display. Everyone is so excited about this tree. And a bit more about the tree behind me here. It's a 40 year old tree and it's 45 foot tall white spruce and it's donated from a family in Nova Scotia. Um, so there's a lot to know about it. There's a lot of history here and the vibes are, are great. That is so exciting. Now you look pretty cold out there. Tell us how cold is it really? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's feeling pretty cold out here. I think right now, of course, you're a weather expert, Caroline, but I think right now we're looking at about 40 degrees, but you definitely want to be bundled up out here. We got people hats, gloves, not me, but everyone else is. Uh, but it's a little chilly out here, but everyone is staying huddled together and we're, you know, getting ready. You know, the weather is one of the hold up for people to really come out there, but it seems that there's a lot of people behind you right now. so. Tell us, how's the crowd feel right now? Are they excited? Are they still waiting? Because the tree looks so beautiful. It does. Yeah, people are excited. They're really, really waiting for this to happen. But we got some things going on. You know, we have free hot chocolate, so people are staying warm with a nice beverage, of course, and hearing some good tunes and having a good time together. There's a lot of families out here, a lot of couples. I talked to a couple earlier who came all the way from Nova Scotia here in Boston to see the tree that has come from, of course, their home province. And that's so cool that people from so far and wide are able to come out here and gather around together. Well, Katie, you know, we cannot wait for the magic. We know it's on its way, uh, but we're going to head to break now. So we will catch in, catch up, and see you very soon when the tree lights up. <laughs> awesome. Oh, hey. Okay. 
If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets <laughs> and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. <laughs> okay, Dad. One, two, three. <laughs> Find you. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you as you bring our colorful stories to the world. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. What can you tell us about the scene? Now, Caroline, like you said earlier, it really is feeling just like the end of Elf right now. <laughs> Everyone was just singing along to Jingle Bells. Everyone's singing, getting ready. The tree's going to be lit in about two minutes, so people are really getting ramped up for it. And, of course, the, the tree is the main event. There are also all of the lights on the Boston Common and the Public Garden. They're going to be lit as well, which I'm sure is good news for many Emerson students. It's, though, you know, the sun is setting a lot earlier, it's tough. 4 p.m. It's dark, but being able to be in your class, look out the window, see the lights, or from your dorm too, it really just makes things so much better. Having a little dose of holiday cheer in your life. I, for one, am really excited for it. Also, right after the lighting, of course, for any people who want the night to continue, right after, Mayor Wu is also going to be going over to Com Ave to light all the lights on the Commonwealth Mall, which is also going to be going all the way down to Kenmore this year. That'll also be a big event. There will be free hot chocolate and cookies there. So if anyone wants a little sweet treat after they've been in the cold for a while, it's the perfect chance to go out and get it. So the festivities, really, they're just continuing. Yeah, that is so exciting. Right. Ah, so much happening. Ex exactly. I know, Katie, you've been out there for a while. So what what is the thing that you found that is so that is the most fun out there? The most fun thing that's out here, I think, is just everyone gathering. <gasps> and hold that We're going. Two, one. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Happy holidays. Oh my gosh, look at that tree. Oh. The light. The... It looks beautiful out there. And those are the fireworks. <laughs> oh, and there's fireworks. Oh my god, I can't wait to see it myself. Look at that. Okay, it looks beautiful <laughs> out there. I cannot wait to get out there and see it. I know. I feel like right now it truly does feel like Christmas. Christmas is here. It is. Finally here. <laughs> Doesn't it make every walk through the common more glamorous? It really does. And Katie, we love chatting with you tonight. But now it's time for you to get warm. Go get some hot chocolate. Yes. Please get inside. <laughs> Please have a great night, Katie. Take care, Katie. And I will. Thanks, well, guys. Tomorrow, the 25 countdown kicks off. <laughs> we had so much fun with you guys tonight. And I think I can officially say I am 100% in the Christmas spirit. Oh, you are absolutely right. And it is, Caroline. Hard, it is hard not to get into the Christmas spirit after the beautiful tree lighting ex uh, event that Katie showed us just now. I can literally taste the hot oh. chocolate in my oh, throat yes. and mouth right now. Yeah, I am craving some myself right now. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us tonight for WEBN. I am Caroline Reese. And I am Justin Chen. We wish you a happy holiday. You better watch out. You better, you better not, not cry. cry. You, you better, better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake.